This episode of Film Rides brought to you by Domain.com. Today we're talking about color grading and diffusion. Welcome to Film Rise, the show that takes misery out of the effects techniques. One of my favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. And today we have good news. Our music pack is out for you to check out. We have a full pack with 12 different songs, all of them with smaller packs broken out so you can get what you need at a lower cost, something that we're always going to try to do so there's something at every price point, like I keep saying. All of the tracks are 100% royalty-free. It's not licensed. It is royalty-free, which means you can use them however you want. In any film you want, make money off your film, whatever. It is totally free for you to use as you would like once purchased. So check that out right here on our store to hear the songs and get demos of the packs. But last week we made this guy right here, an awesome DIY light bar. So if you want to know how to build it, watch last week's episode. This week we are softening that with some no budget diffusion. Then, as promised, some post grading techniques. So let's do that. Again, here is the light that we are using, and the big problem with this light, as I showed last week, is that you get crazy multiple shadows with it when you're using it, since it has eight light sources all in a row. So we need to take those multiple sources and turn it into one source. How do you do that? Diffusion. With something like a sheet, or even better, the shower curtain, we are taking those multiple points of light and turning them into one big soft source, and reducing those shadows down to one. But you are changing the quality of light from a hard source to a soft one, which I usually prefer, but it might not be what you want. So, as I was saying last week, this limitation is something you need to keep in mind. If you want a hard source, you'll need to hide those shadows, or you could toss on some diffusion and solve your shadow issue. It's all about what you're looking for for that shot. But to go back, what we're using for diffusion here is a $7 shower curtain. It's a white frosted curtain that you can easily hang however you want, wherever you want. And again, it's something that is not my original idea. This is something that is used all the time, even by the pros. And it's also an awesome alternative to spending a ton of money on something that is essentially the exact same thing. But now let's take a quick look at some test shots we did with it the other night. part about using the shower curtain is how big it is, which as we discussed on a previous episode, the bigger the source, the softer the light. So we're able to pull that curtain away from our light bar, get it very close to our subject, and have some beautifully soft light on there. Now if we jump to the diffusion that you would normally have when you're using a small crew, which is gel right on the fixture itself, we're getting a much smaller source that is a lot less soft, which could be a good thing depending on what you want. But side by side, you can see how much more pleasant the shower curtain is on the skin and how much more it's wrapping. Again, this is because we have a larger source that is closer to the subject. And you could always use the curtain to add some sexy as well. After my night test, I took this baby outside during the day to control the sun a bit. Here is without, and then with the shower curtain, diffusing the sun. Again, we're getting a much more soft and pleasant image, and here more filmic, I think. Sometimes with an outdoor sun shot, it could start to look a little video-ish because of the dynamic range of the camera or how some digital cameras respond to highlights. I found that softening up that hot light goes a long way in adding a more filmic quality, which is another reason why Golden Hour is so delicious. And the last thing I did with the curtain was to try to bounce light off of it, which gave me this very soft light on the actor's face. I like the quality that I'm getting here. Pretty interesting. Of course, we have the blue in the background since it is daylight coming through the window, and I am set to about 3500 Kelvin in camera with soft white bulbs reflecting off the curtain. But next, we're going to take a look at color grading this shot right here. But first, we do some sponsor action. Domain.com is the place to go if you're trying to get yourself seen on the interwebs, whether you got a business or blog, what? Oh, it's been so, it's, you've been quiet, it's been nice. I have been giving you a break, letting you recoup, if you will. But I think that time is over. It's about time I return. If you want to get yourself seen on the interwebs, you need a website. Domain.com has a reliable and affordable uh, hosting plans, and they got the domain discovery service to help you pick the right name for you. <laughs> I just, I see you over there, I'm anticipating your madness. If you want to get some money off, you can use, you can use the coupon code, you can use the coupon code, Phil Knight. 
Who's there? Me, mother <laughs> You can use your coupon code FILMRIGHT at checkout to get 15% off your domain name and web hosting. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. Hey, you have issues. Do you have enough room? Because I'm here to stay. Logo. So here's the shot that we're going to be grading, which is already graded right now. So we'll take that off to see the original. It's very warm. My eye getting pulled away from the subject to the light in the back left. And for this, I'm wanting a slightly more cool look. So we add magic bullet looks and open it up. Of course, everything that I do here, you can do with the color tools that come with any editor. It just makes it a lot easier and more manageable to do it in something like looks. But if you don't use looks, you can still take this general idea and use it in whatever application you do use. Right off the bat, I know I want to bring up the levels on my actor's face, so I will grab a spot exposure tool and add that in, change the shape to match how I want, then boost the exposure for that area just a bit. Then I'll move on to some curves, but before I start adjusting contrast, I'm going to tweak the color just a bit, so I'll jump over to the reds and pull it out of the mids and the shadows, then to the blues and add a bit of that into the mids and then take it out of the shadows, which will add a little bit of yellow there. Then I'll move on to the lens section, add a vignette, which is a subtle one centered around Around his face. Next I'm going to add curves again, this time to add some contrast. I'll take up the contrast a bit, then the mids, and drop the shadows just a touch, and we have this before and after these curves, which is an important thing to keep in mind with this, is that every time you add something, you're affecting the image after everything that came before it. So it does matter where you put an effect in this lineup. But moving on next, we're gonna add some colorries to three-way, add some cooler tones into the mids and the shadows, which is gonna up the contrast a bit as well. Then I'll add hue saturation to desaturate just a bit. Then I'm gonna add their bleach bypass filter, which affects the highlights, as you can see here. Really, I'm just wanting to boost the highlight areas. You don't have to do it this way. I just like the look it gives me. Now I'm noticing that there's a bit too much red on his nose and lips, kind of like he's wearing lipstick. So I'm gonna add ranged HSL, grab the red, and we can jack up the saturation here to see what it's actually affecting. And now I'm gonna take this towards orange just a little bit and also desaturate it a little as well. And that's looking good there. Next, I'm gonna add another instance of spot exposure since this light in the back is a little distracting. I'll center it over that, add plenty of feathering and drop the exposure considerably. And this is a good example of how the placement in the effect line actually matters. Here, we have a warmer color on the fireplace in the back a little less detail, but if we move the spot exposure layer to happen at the beginning before the other corrections, it gets more cool and adds the detail back in, since this now affects the layer before all the other layers. And finally, I will add pop, not for sharpening, just a little bit of extra grit and contrast that it gives. You can do the same thing with unsharpened mask, and we are done before and after. I can also come down here and name this look and save it as a custom look for later use, which I love. But now with the grade done, I'm going to shut it off and add denoiser to my image. For this shot, I'm shooting right to the SD card. For more detail and less digital noise, I could shoot with my Ninja recorder, but sometimes that's not an option or you may not have it at all. So one process that I'll do to help this is add denoiser to get rid of as much of that grossness as possible. Usually I'll keep it between 50 and 70% and I will put this above my grade. Then I'm gonna add the grain back into my footage, placing that after the grade. The filter I'm using for this one comes from FX Home, all of their HitFilm plugins, which you can bring into Premiere and After Effects. This is my favorite uh, for grain that I found so far, which this is doing two things. First, we're getting rid of the digital nastiness, not the nice filmic grain, but that gross compressed look. Then, instead of keeping that overly glossed image, which isn't the look I'm going for and can often feel digital as well, we add that back in with a subtle amount of film style grain. And now we have this, which Maybe hard to see the before and after of this with the online compression. So if you want to see an uncompressed version, check out the link in the description to download those. But that's it for today. And if you're interested in checking out that grain filter, you can get it with HitFilm's plugins right here. You can pop those in After Effects and Premiere. I've been loving them. And again, our music pack is out. 12 100% royalty-free tracks done in different styles. For our first pack, we decided to go with the style of different films that we love. But on top of all the full tracks, we also have all of the layers that make up the songs broken out so that you can get in and customize it however you want. We also have breakout packs of each style so that you can buy it individually at lower costs. To learn more about that and hear the songs, go here to check them out. We have demos for them and everything. Ben Worley composed all of them and he did an unbelievable job. Dude is crazy talented. You could follow him on Twitter right here to see what else he's up to. And I'll see you guys next week when Somerset thinks I'm not ready for the case.